wasn't a decision as much as it was an opportunity that presented itself and I just had to take it. Uh, I, I thought I would start acting later in life, um, but this happened and I'd have been a fool not to jump on it. I mean, it's something I love to do and it's something I think I can do. So here we are. I don't like being put in a box because as a child, I, I was able to do a lot of creative and artistic things. I could draw, I could dance, I was, I could sing and, and write and I was directing little plays, you know, and I used to uh, be one of our school's athletes. And I wanted to be able to do all the things that I was able to do. And so when this opportunity came, I just thought, you know what, life doesn't always turn out the way that we want it to. I had definite ideas of where I wanted to go, and but when things happen, you see them for the opportunities that they are and you take them. And so that's what happened with Broken Roundabout and then Battleground. And yeah, shall keep going, we move. Somehow, somehow, many roads lead to the village square. So we'll just keep going till we get to the square. I played um, a lead role in a film called Broken Roundabout, directed by George Sunomkura. And we filmed it in Makodi which was nice because I got an opportunity to visit Makodi again, visit Benue State again. And uh, it's very beautiful and they have such wonderful food there because I love food and that was great. Not professionally, I wasn't acting, but I did, I did, a, I did a couple of plays in church. Uh, one, one of the plays was put together by Shayo who heads Sauce Productions that brought us, you know, Inspector K. She's really, really good at that. And I, I did some acting for my grades in school. So, and then of course, you know, church, church choir and drama groups back when I was a child. So I've, I've always been doing this, but just um, 2016 is when it became professional for me. I had a day job. I was a civil servant. I worked in the Ministry of Aviation, specifically in Nigerian Airspace Management Agency. I was a public affairs officer. So yeah, I did that for about four to five years. And even though, you know, the corporate world is not the path I wanted for myself, it definitely taught me a lot about, about working with people about uh, patience and work ethic and working under people, whether you enjoy it or not, you just have to do that. Well, definitely it has given me a sense of structure, of timelines, of getting things done, of putting in the work. Because, you know, a lot of people would think that as in not is it not to act? Is it not to just uh, cram lines and, you know, but this just gives you the sense that what you're doing is work that matters. And so as you put in effort to, you know, file documents and, you know, you know, all the stuff you do in the corporate world. So you put in that effort and creativity and time into doing this work in your artistic field. So. There have definitely been lots of ups and downs. Um, the ups came, you know, with uh, the release of my first single, 411. And that, that just, you know, I was getting messages from people around the world. And, you know, that was weird because, yes, you know, this is sort of what you want, but it's never as, you never really expect it to be the way it happens. And just getting, messages from people that the things that you imagine and create touch their lives is life-changing and you know being on shows like battleground and smart money Women, and all the things that i've been able to do in this little time and now la femme and jola it's it's been it's made all the down moments worth it and you know lows are as important as the highs because with the lows you you appreciate the highs more 
The lows teach you humility and they teach you grace. They teach you patience. They teach you um, the importance of self-awareness and confidence in who you are and what you have to offer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, of course, rejection is part of the game, you know. I think I think as an actor, as a singer, and I think generally as a creative, let me speak as a creative, you, you face a lot more rejections than you do um, approvals and acceptance because there are lots of people who are fighting for the same things that you are. You go into audition for a role and they are probably like, 27,000 other people who, who wants the same role that you want. So, I mean, you win some, you lose some, but there, there's plenty of fish in the sea and you just keep casting your nets till you get the one that you want. Hmm. I don't know. I, well, <laughs> I feel like because of the way auditions happen here, especially open auditions when you call you have to you have to put it into perspective there are lots of people who are desperate for opportunities because life is hard in this country and so when there is an opportunity that people see that can lead them to in some way their faces on a billboard and money in their bank account they're going to rush at it whether or not they have the talent to be there or not and i think um, people who audition generally do not do a good enough job sifting out people by, you know, like putting out all the sort of information that you need. Oh, we need this sort of person for this sort of role because a lot of them are general. And so by the time you come for auditions, um, it's a lot of people and people who audition are tired. And so finding people at open auditions becomes a lot harder because by the time you've seen like 50,000 people, you're tired. So even if people are good, you don't have time. It's like next, 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 next. So I think personally, that is something that should be improved upon. Now as to whether they do find people at open auditions or if they do open auditions just for show, I cannot speak to that. I don't know. Um, I have auditioned sometimes and I've gotten things from auditions and sometimes from referrals. So. I just wish everybody the best and I hope that they find what they're looking for in life. Not necessarily. Um, the director reached out to me on Twitter. She said, what's up? Work day. Are you interested? I said, yes. Because <laughs> um, I, I, I admire her work and I had introduced myself to her uh, and you know, I'd followed her. So, and she liked some of my tweets, which was like, Jesus Christ, oh my God, oh my God. And she was a fan of um, the show I was on, Battleground. So when she came calling, yes, I did send in, you know, auditions and she tried me out, but she had already told me that she wants me for this role if I was interested in it. And she sent me the script to read. And when I read it, it was like, I, it, you know, when Mildred Okwa reaches out to you, you're sure that I'll do like this. But then I read the script, the weight of the ambition that was written out in this script, like my shoulders like drooped because I felt, I felt it was a heavy load. And I felt, God, am I going to be able to do this? What does she see in me to give me this kind of responsibility? But, you know, never shy away from challenge and I took on the challenge and here we are like I like to say what first struck me about um, Dejare was his vulnerability this was a guy who you know from the outside is pompous and arrogant and overconfident you know comes from a good background but deep down he had a savior, a savior complex, and I relate to that on a personal level. Um, being drawn to wanting to fix broken things, and so I could relate to that, and that led him down a path of making 
mistakes that make the film very, very interesting to watch. So, yeah, his vulnerability. Working with Mildred Okwa is a, it's truly a life-changing experience. She's one of those directors that makes you do the work. And when you're done every day on set, you're both exhausted, excited, happy, vulnerable, because she makes everybody that works with her, every actor that works with her, open up. So it's like you're psychologically and emotionally naked and just real which is what she wants. She wants real. She doesn't have time for these things. And she takes care of her cast and her crew. She makes sure that everybody is on the same page, you know, up here. And everybody brings their best to the work. So I remember a scene where I was supposed to be very, very angry, but we were filming in Cape Town. And it was my first time in Cape Town. And I was so excited and I was, the anger was not there. I did not have any anger in me because I was in Cape Town in winter, cold air was blowing me, my skin was fresh. I was happy. And so she stopped the, she stopped the shoot and she came and yelled at me. And you know, that got me there because she knows how to say the things that will get you where she wants you to be. And she did that. And I was so angry. And then the next take was it. That was what she needed. But then the next few days, I still had to be in that headspace. But that night, she now came and she was now, you know, explaining and now trying to calm me down. I was like, no, 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 no. I want to be angry. Like, I want to be mad. Don't, don't calm me down. But, you know, she has a way of just, mm, 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 mm. yeah, by the time she's done, you're now like happy again. So I hate that, but I love that, so, <laughs> yeah. First of all, I will say that um, I grew up adoring and admiring Rita Dominic because, I mean, Rita Dominic. Um, let me just segue a little. When I was a child growing up in Calabar, we lived in Federal Housing Estates in one of the those tenement buildings, you know, four flats in one building. And we were, we was poor. And our neighbor next door, they were the first to have like a big television in the whole, in the whole F line. And we lived in F12. And so they would open up their door so all the children on the street would come and watch television, but we couldn't enter because we were dirty little children. But I would always come out, you know, when Rita Dominic's movies, you know, were, you know, on. I remember uh, uh, Girl Scots with Ogil Kui. And when Ogil was like, get out of my sight, you stink of poverty. That was iconic. Anyway, so just growing up and just getting the opportunity to work with Rita, I was very, very nervous. I was very scared because ah, before, I Rita would say, ah, this boy's mouth is smelling. And to me, where do you get this boy from? So, well, Rita is an amazing professional. She's very kind. She was able to put me at ease. So, working with her, shooting those scenes was not as, you know, scary as I thought it would be. You know, we were in the scene and we had great chemistry. So, it was, it was actually pretty easy shooting those scenes. Plus, you know, we have crew. In the room so it's, it's not like you can be you know so at least that kept that kept you know the man in check you know plus the director should be looking at you like <laughs> so. what was going through my mind um I don't know, in the moment, because it's kind of like even when I'm performing, you know, on stage, in the moment, I'm not thinking about it. I'm just there. And because I practice, 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 so that it just becomes second nature to me. 
So before we shoot, I'll be nervous. But then once they say action, none of that matters because you can't come there and disgrace your family. You have to do it. Well, you can disgrace your family by being naked. <laughs> but we well, have to do a good job. So either way, um, it was it was cool. I mean, I'm an actor, and sometimes these things happen. And if it's true to the story, if it makes sense, if it's not just put there just to say, oh, somebody's naked, you know. But it it makes sense for that. And hey, I think it was for a worthy cause. I don't mind stripping for a worthy cause. I think if my dad was not a pastor. I'd be a stripper. I know my mom is very, very excited to see it. And she'll see it now. Has she not seen me before? Like, maybe she bummed me. So it's like, you've seen me as everybody else has. So I'm not ashamed. You know, if that makes sense. Uh, I think, I think, I think the work is good. I think the film is good good i think it's very interesting and i think it just made sense for the moment so i don't think my mom is going to have a problem with it um or if she if she does she would definitely never say it to me just because that's just who she is but my dad eh, he may have a thing or two to say but i think he'll be cool i think he'll be cool with it ultimately because i was raised to make the right decisions you know and what is right by you may not necessarily always be right by other people but it felt right to me to do it so i did it acting is about being vulnerable and letting go of your own self your own ego and your own thoughts and letting someone someone else you know speak through you and so if you're not if you don't have any empathy or vulnerability well, I, I don't know how effective you could be as an actor. And vulnerability isn't necessarily about, you know, being emotional or soft. You know, it's just being true and being real and just, you know, just being true, honestly. So I'm, I'm ready for whatever opportunities come my way. Never say no to a challenge. I definitely love to play darker characters. And um, I am sort of not um, sitting by waiting for those to come to me. I'm starting to create those things for myself because I'm also a writer. And I've, in as much as I love being in front of the camera, I really want to be behind the camera. I, I directed a short film, you know, that I'm going to uh, push in some way soon. Uh, so I want to create more of those things and I love dark, mysterious type stories and that show the darkness of human thinking and the darker sides that we don't really like to talk about. The reception has been good. I'm, sometimes I don't feel, sometimes I, I don't always feel worthy of the love and support that I've gotten. But I just think that's a personal issue that I need to deal with. Um, but it has been great seeing how the things that I do, the work that I do, the songs that I create in my head, you know, just resonate with people. The little jobs that I do, the acting work I do, just seeing how people react to it, how people respond to it positively. I mean, of course, there's always the flack because you can't be for everybody, which is fair. But I choose to focus on the, on the good things, the things that inspire me and keep me going. But also remembering that, you know, human love is not always sure. Sometimes they'll love you, sometimes they'll hate you. You just have to keep going and focus on where you're trying to get to. Um, I just think that is how I, I think about these things so that I, I don't let myself be swayed. And also surrounding myself with people who tell me the truth, people who don't lie to me. I don't like lies. Um, 
Yeah. Just having a great management team, great friends and family support. And yeah, I think you're good to go. That is something, merging both is something that I have had to learn to do because it was definitely challenging in the beginning. Still, still is right now. Um, but this is something that I love to do. And when you love it, every challenge is just, it's just a hiccup. It's a hurdle. You jump over it and you keep going because there have to be hurdles on the way. Um, I also, like I said, want to produce and direct film and music content because I'm very imaginative. There, there are worlds that live in my head. And sometimes I think I'm crazy with this sort of things that I think of and I create. And so now the work is in bringing all these things into real life and it needs teams it needs people it needs funding it needs real work and that is really what i'm focusing on every other thing is it will fall in place people will say what they want to say but when you give them what they see they're going to react to it first of all very thankful for what lionheart did you know just opening us and our film market and our film space to a much larger conversation. And you know, thankful to like our older films that are being watched all over the world, you know, but not really being talked about like that. But then Lionheart came and just sort of pff, opened up this door. So bless God for Genevieve Energy. And then Milkmaid came along and I saw it. And I haven't seen the full film yet, but what I saw just made sense. Of, of course, it, it's getting all the buzz that it's getting. I think John the Baptist walked so Jesus could run. And Jesus ran so that we can fly. Um, it's not that first film that's going to do everything that we wanted to do. And I feel like Milkmaid um, has done its job. It has opened us up even more to more of a conversation. And uh, like I said, there is so much talent, there's so much amazing film content coming out from this space. So I don't think necessarily it is because of anything bad about the film. I just think probably um, there needs to be more support in the future from the government, from film financers, we need funding. Better soup na monikila. So to make a great film, we need money. We need sponsorship. And so I'm just going to give a big shout out to GTI um, Investments. They they sponsored our film. So thankful to that. And we need more of those people in the corporate world, in the money space, to see what we are doing, to see the possibility of what can happen here. And put money behind us because great arts needs its funding the italian renaissance that gave rise to you know da vinci you know botticelli Raphael, all these people was sponsored by the medici family and the big wealthy families in italy back then so art needs money films need money music needs money we need money <laughs>